Hi there, my name's Janice, and welcome back to TRI. Today, I'll be masked for the video since we are filming this in school, but other than that, let's get into the video. Today's lecture is going to cover Chinese history, and particularly the two dynasties, the Tang and the Song Dynasty. So just some background knowledge, first is the Tang Dynasty, and this was founded by the Li family in 618 to 906 AD. Some of the more important aspects of them is the fact that they had the civil service system, culture and poetry, and they mostly followed the religion Taoism. Next onto the Song Dynasty, this was actually in 960 to 12. 76 AD, and it was founded by the Emperor Taizu of Song. They mostly capitalized on science and education and economic growth, and the major religions that they followed was Taoism and Buddhism. So how are they related? The Song Dynasty basically follows the Tang Dynasty. However, in case you're wondering why there's this gap between the two where the Tang Dynasty ended in 906 AD and the Song Dynasty started in 960 AD. The reason why there's this gap in between is because there is this five dynasty and ten kingdoms period. Another thing is that both of them are part of China's Golden Age, which happened between 600 AD to 1600 AD. One key difference that they had in between was that the Song had more growth despite less land, and this growth happened in the areas of population and economic growth. So onto the actual content of this video, today we're going to be covering five key things. First is the civil service exam, second is the Confucian scholar, third is economics, fourth is the Grand Canal, and fifth is innovation. And then there's going to be a couple questions for you guys to answer later. So first on the civil service exam. The definition of the civil service exam according to Marianne Webster is that it's a test to get a job in a civil service and the administrative part of the government. In the Tang Dynasty, this was essentially kept from the Sui Dynasty, which happened prior to the Tang Dynasty and was derived from Confucianism. The system was designed to select the most meritorious officials and tested writing, classics, and literary style. The Tang Dynasty specifically liked to focus on poetry and they promoted literature, which is essentially why there's so much literature that goes on in this dynasty. This was especially apparent in the Song Dynasty, which followed after the Tang Dynasty, and this is for three main reasons of how they actually made the system better. First is that there were qualifying examinations, and these were stages that were created for examinees that they had to pass before they could get to the final stages and then officials were selected there. The second thing that the Song Dynasty did was that they actually made the test anonymous. They made those taking the exams replace their names with numbers and had clerks recopy the exams so that handwriting could not be recognized. The last thing that the Song Dynasty did to make the exam even more selective was that they actually had the emperor supervise the last stage to make sure that the best contestants were chosen for the government. So why was the system created? Essentially, it started to counter the rise of the military men in governance and made sure that it wasn't just the rich and military powerful dominating the land. This also meant that people could start rising in class because now anybody could actually have a government. This created a new class known as the landed gentry or the Confucian scholar. So a quick definition of what the gentry means. Essentially it means that it's a person of good social position, specifically the class of people next to below the nobility and position of birth. In ancient China, this status was actually gained from the exams and was known as the scholar gentry. People could start rising in higher classes once they pass the exams because they are now a governmental official. So what was the significance of this? Essentially, first is that literacy was starting to become even more prioritized and most people wanted to learn more because they wanted to gain a better status. The second thing was that status was now malleable, which means that people could rise between levels and thus there was no longer this confinement to the lower levels that they used to believe they were confined to. However, one thing that still remained was that there was a cycle of rich having better chances just because they had more resources and thus more knowledge than the poor. The third thing we're going to talk about today is about the economics of the two dynasties. So starting off with the economics of the Tang Dynasty. One thing that the Tang Dynasty really prioritized on was the whole idea of trade, and they were essentially affected by the Silk Road. This was their connection to the Western world and actually created even more profits for this dynasty. The second thing that they did that helped their economy was the idea of land redistribution. This meant that the land actually went from the aristocrats to the peasants and thus created more income for the peasants. This was created to have more taxes for the government, but also peasants were making more money so they were quite happy with it. In the Song Dynasty, their economy was similar to that of the Tang Dynasty, but they had even more growth as mentioned before. Three main things that they capitalized on was industry, innovation, and technology. We are going to get into the specifics of these later, 
but all three of these meant that the Song Dynasty actually became the peak of Chinese economy throughout history. As we mentioned before, we're going to be talking about a little bit of technology, and one very specific one is the Grand Canal. So the Grand Canal was a series of waterways in eastern or northern China, and it enabled regimes to send surplus grain down into different areas of China. The New Bain Canal was built in the Sui Dynasty, but it remained the chief waterway throughout both the Tang Dynasty and the Song Dynasty. As mentioned before, these canals operated as a way to get surplus grain into the capital or even to the military who were defending China. This meant that their economy was much stronger and allowed for people to have more food. Lastly, we're going to be getting into other innovations that were between the two dynasties. First, talking about the Tang Dynasty, they created a couple of things like gunpowder, waterproofing, fireproofing, gas stoves, air conditioning, and agricultural machines. All of these sort of all contributed to the economy and made them more modern and innovative. A lot of these technologies carried over into the Song Dynasty, but the Song Dynasty actually created even more innovations, and some of their most notable ones are the mechanical clock, shipbuilding, paper money, compass navigation, porcelain production, and even more agricultural machines that all help them with their economy. Overall, this meant that the quality of life improved and the poor could actually afford linen clothing that was originally afforded for the middle class. That's what the image sort of depicts here. So just a few questions to ask you guys to see if you guys learned something from this lecture. The civil service exam is derived from which ancient philosophy? It's Confucianism, and essentially this is because Confucianism really capitalized on merit and the idea of having more knowledge, and that's where the civil service exam sort of comes in. I'm going to leave you guys with these five questions to see if you guys can answer them. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. As always, we hope to see you in future videos.